In this, this video, video, we're going to show you how we feed our family on less than one eighth of an acre in our urban backyard homestead. Let's get into it. Welcome back to Moonwood Homestead, where we help you become more self-sufficient one project at a time. Today, I'm joined by the homestead goddess, Christina, and I'm Brad, and we're going over our, our tour of our homestead. It's going to be a fantastic little trip around our yard and show you all the things that we're doing here uh, right in our urban setting backyard. So, Yeah, I think uh, I wanted to start with what inspired us to even get started. And I think it's actually quite a funny story because it began began a long time ago. No, it began um, roughly a year ago with the initiating conversation of I felt like such a hypocrite being such an animal advocate and buying into the system of cruel, inhumane, cruel meat and how I was going to go vegetarian or vegan and start working towards that. And then he made the comment of, well, what if I, you know, ham kill, provide our own meat? And um, I was like, I mean, I guess so, it's more humane. But um, so I was more open to that and just being more conscious consumer. And nothing really stemmed from that per se, specifically until my sister called me and was like, you have to watch this really awesome documentary called The Biggest Little Farm on Hulu. And I was like, sure, why not? And <laughs> so we did, and he has had, at least since we've been together, hasn't really ever expressed interest in like gardening or anything like that. Like I know he had interest in gardening because he said he used to you know, take care of his mom's garden. But then The Biggest Little Farm documentary came on and we were so inspired and I'm more of a talker. I'm like, oh, that's so inspiring. I've always wanted a homestead and I've always wanted a farm and it's always been my dream. But I personally just don't have the energy to handle it on my own. It's very huge commitments. And so he, being a man of his word, was like, I'll do it. And so we started conversations and I wasn't really taking it seriously, to be honest. And he, at the time, my entire backyard was a sand pit completely. And he was like, well, what if we just put some grass down? I was like, if we're gonna plant stuff and spend the energy and money doing it, like let's make it stuff that we can eat and provide to our community. That's sparked the obsession within him. And it definitely became, definitely became an obsession. I think right about that time as, um, as we, the world, we're dealing with all of this craziness uh, that came out of the pandemic. Uh, everyone kind of dealt with it in their own unique ways. Um, I chose to lose my mind in the backyard. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's relevant and healthy. Yeah. Uh, healthy. But really, once I got the inspiration to, to kind of start working back here, originally it was just going to be kind of garden beds and such. It wasn't going to be much more than that. And I walked into our local grocery store and saw that there was really no food. Um, the meat was gone. Of course, toilet paper was out of here, uh, and but on top of that, there was just no, there was no bread, there was no, there was no pasta, there was no nothing, and and I was just blown away. I was absolutely terrified. So we went from just wanting to garden to well, I don't know how to do any of these things. So I want to learn. Not that I thought the world was going to end, but what if I could never have to worry, and my family would never have to worry about anything to do with being able to eat. And so we started from gardening and went from, you know, from that to all of this. Yeah, but I found that over time, one of the most important things about what we were doing is the ability to commune with nature so much. All of my friends are like, I could never take care of these plants. And I was like, I felt the same way. I felt super overwhelmed by taking care of everything. But at the same time, the more you take care of it, the more you become invested in these plants. And I know it sounds silly, but like I take, I take on as if like, this is my responsibility to take care of this plant. It is a living creature. It may not be an animal, but it is still something that's living and it depends on me to take care of it. So there was definitely a level of commitment in the beauty of communing with nature and having it give back to you in a lot of different ways, for sure. But definitely the sustaining and being able to provide for the family, I think is one of the most powerful 
things that we can do for ourselves. Um, given that it's so easy to go to a grocery store and be so removed from the actual process. For sure. And uh, I just didn't want to, to do that anymore. It felt important to actually partake in the food that we're providing to ourselves and our future family. No, yeah, I, I definitely agree. How big is our yard? So we have a pretty typical city backyard. It should be a eighth of an acre with the house on it. So not, not very large. Um, I feel like our biggest goal as we got started into the journey of doing this was what could I pack in here? Um, <laughs> and even more so, I found watching a lot of the YouTubers as you're doing now, um, that most of the time if they were doing, if you were, a, if you were a backyard homesteader, you had acreage. If you were an urban homesteader, you're doing it in a yard size more like ours, and you probably would limit yourselves to a garden and or chickens. That was mostly it for what I could see. And we wanted to, and by we I mean probably mostly me at the start, and now she's totally into it and, and digging it. So happy. <laughs> uh, I really am. But we wanted to see just how far could I go within legal limits, um, but <laughs> with how mm -hmm. far could we go? And so presently are able to crank out eggs, tree branches falling from trees. <laughs> Hopefully that was a tree and not a squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> I know it was a branch. Okay, okay, good. Try that again. Ooh. Eggs, <laughs> vegetables, um, fruit. We have uh, honey and beeswax, uh, compost, mm -hmm. eggs, and soon to be meat as yes. well. Enough that down the line, we should be able to sustain us pretty consistently. Completely and fully. Mm -hmm. Almost entirely uh, for, for a family right now of two, but uh, we could up that <laughs> and hope to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think with the meat situation, we'll have more than enough meat to, mm -hmm. to sustain us where we wouldn't have to buy meat anymore unless we wanted something other than rabbit. Um, oh, we're also getting turkeys. Uh, and the vegetable aspect, it's, we're still learning how to have a consistent flow of vegetables, but we have the space for it. Now we just need to have the, the capability for it, yeah. the, the know-how for it. But so it's definitely more than enough to feed a family fully. Let's take a look around and see what we've got. All right, so we are a normal, normal yard up front in our uh, little neighborhood. Normal in, neighborhood. In, uh, Suburbia, Suburbia Tampa of the Tampa area of, uh, of Florida. So nice warm weather. It's a beautiful April day, actually Easter Sunday uh, today. So enjoying the, the lovely weather. But behind our front yard, what happens? Go. Our garden helpers. Yes, of course. So what do we got going on here? The first section we have is our composting system. We have our worm bins for our worm casting. And then we have our system set up for our produce uh, decomposition, hot hot composting setup, mm -hmm. um, where we have the different stage bins, and then we have our final compost over here. Uh, watch out, Daisy May. Where this is where we would gather our final soil compost, and then include the worm castings into it to help make it as nutritious as possible for our plants. Yeah. Let me shut this door. All right. So something cool we're kind of getting started on shortly. Uh, we literally got in all the supplies yesterday to get our Bakashi composting started. So that's a new thing for us. Uh, this will allow us to compost meat and food waste that we have uh, that's cooked. Other things that you typically would not compost uh, in your normal compost system. So we'll have videos on that coming up and just uh, really exciting. Always something new to do huh? in, the, uh, in the backyard homes. Yeah, and then we have our little social area with our fire pit and hammock yeah, where we have our gorgeous our jasmine pits. that's blooming right now, which is the most glorious smell ever, mm -hmm. especially next to a campfire because that's <laughs> also my favorite smell ever. Um, so this is more for at least the plants we plant or we try to have some intention behind it, whether it's something we can eat or something for our bees and other pollinators to utilize as well. And then as you round the corner, we have our vegetable, fruits, herbs, flowers, 
um, our rain barrel system, which we'll check out as we move along this way. But currently we have a total of six garden beds, um, four, four by fours over here. What is this, a 10 by one? Uh, yes, yes, 10 by ones. And then another like 12 by one. Yep, just a little longer. Where we have some of our lettuces growing and um, additional potted plants because room and we can control their environment a lot better that way if we have finicky plants yeah we want to be able to move them so we've got a number of things going right now in the garden as far as um, like currently doing really well we're also in between some of our stuff uh, because it's obviously april so now it's it's a beautiful time for planting so we have a lot of seeds uh, in the ground or the uh, starts that have just begun so as far as our beds go we have my personal favorite which is our pepper plants i've got a little bit of everything from uh, chocolate habaneros i've got reapers going i've got ghosts i've got just general green and jalapenos. bell peppers jalapenos you name it uh, either in this bed or in some of my other surrounding pots so my favorite i like the heat uh, we have some beautiful uh, cucumber uh, moving eggplant. Um, we've tried to we have some squash. work with our beds by implementing both green onion and marigolds, trying to help uh, naturally drive away pests. We also really heavily utilize uh, neem oil and BT spray and other things like that that are, are safe and organic and really helpful in the garden. Yes. And then my, my babes, my babes beds. Yeah, which you got, babe. we have our dill, which we're going to move shortly. We yeah. have some beets cabbage which is almost harvest full mm -hmm. harvest ready she had her first Our radish a couple uh, about a week or two ago a couple weeks ago i have a video one. on that you should check the uh the turnip goddess out <laughs> it was entertaining yes and then our squash all of our beautiful squash Look and at this. like just take a moment here because we started trying to grow squash last year and went horrible like got <laughs> horrible <decimated>. horrible <laughs> and this thing like i could not be prouder of this beautiful bloomed plant uh i think definitely is assisted by our bees this year but <laughs> mm -hmm. nonetheless yeah we have some hyacinth bean right here which yeah. is super yummy and the flowers are gorgeous and this wild plant right here is actually our kale i'm trying to get it to go to seeds so i can harvest the seeds but below that we have some sugar baby melons so we'll have little baby watermelons more cucumber plants as well this is actually our tat soy again trying Some to get it to go to seed baby melons right there right there mm -hmm. actually these are pretty neat these uh, sugar babies um and this really speaks garden community that you can kind of develop in your area because we uh threw out online into the one of the facebook groups for for florida uh saint pete specifically that we were looking for melon seeds because i was wasn't sure what would work here and had somebody mail them to me with a beautiful little note uh, it was so kind and so uh, so nice and it was like oh my gosh real nice people still do exist these are the tat soy pods and they are actually ready to be harvested because they're dried out so you have to wait for the pods to be dry before you can pick them and harvest them you look so pretty thank you babe. lights <laughs> like just cascading <laughs> your homestead glow yes yeah so that's it inside our protected space so we wanted to make sure that we had an ability for our dogs to be able to still have yard run around do crazy stuff do dog stuff uh but not completely trample the heck out of our garden so uh we have those beds inside and then we have a lot of stuff growing out along the sides so we've got some uh we've got a meyer lemon tree our banana uh, we've got some lettuces going we have a tomato plant going uh, we have a couple of different pumpkin seed uh, or starts going rather. Um, so these are great, going to be seminal pumpkins for later this year. And then along the back side, we have our first lemon. Oh, yeah! Mm -hmm. Look at that. This is our second year with this lemon. With our, our first tree. Year. Well, so, yeah, we're, we're going. We've year. had it for almost a year. Um, look at that. Yes, that's not bad for a start. We'll have to transplant it soon. <laughs> All right. So get out of there now. We've got our rain barrels, our rain barrel system, which is roughly 185 gallons between the four barrels and our rain catchment system, which then is connected to these manifolds. So as the rain fills up this barrel, as this one's full, this one gets full. And then as that fills up. So anyways, it's a chain, which then connects to our dripper water system to our entire garden bed, everything. Which is, is yeah, which is so connected helpful. to everything. So it is our complete water source for our garden. And we also have another one over here to 
provide water for our chickens so we don't have to worry about filling the chicken water all the time. Yeah. So this that you see in front of you here hey, is a on. real big work in progress that we're finishing. Uh, we have had for a long time, we had just this section here that we put in uh, when we had the, the chickens right off the bat. And then we were working toward getting rabbits uh, near the end of last year and we wanted something that could keep them in shade and we used canopies that went horribly horribly wrong we had a storm come through and just bust them up and we uh, spent a lot of money on those so we didn't want to re-spend the same amount of money and have it happen again so we decided to make something a little bit more solid so this is all a wood framed shed or uh, extension rather with just the, the plastic corrugated um, roofing and then just recently within the last few weeks we've actually added this half with a built-in shed. Uh, now this is still being finished, obviously. I don't have a door on it yet, uh, but we're almost there and this will be a really amazing space for us to have as a storage unit, um, you know, a little bit of a workshop, et cetera. And it gave even more space for the chickens, um, for the rabbit hutches and everything else that we have inside, which is really, really convenient. So this takes us into, into our livestock area. Our favorite, favorite spot for me anyway. I love it in here. Give you a little pan around so pardon our beekeeping supplies <laughs> good morning ladies all right so we have our we have our rabbit hutches here now these are kind of different kinds of hutches we actually built these ourselves and they're different because they're made out of the closet material that you have inside the house so it's that sprayed on um, aluminum uh, or a plastic coating on the like aluminum um, aluminum frames. We're seeing if it's going to work. Everybody that has utilized it has said it's worked great, but then some people have been cautious about it. So if it doesn't work, then we'll pull it out and, and buy something, but figured why not recycle what you can and, and make use out of it. And at least from a initial standpoint, before I have rabbits in it, it works really well. So, um, just, you know, does the thing. So we'll have rabbits in the next four weeks. We have baby bunnies. We're really excited about those. Uh, so those will become meat rabbits for us here and a great source of protein. And then of course, as if you couldn't hear them and see them already, our, our lovely ladies. So we coop. have our, our chickens. We have uh, five lovely ladies, our three golden girls and our two, uh, our two sapphire gems. So this is a omelet chicken coop. If you haven't seen this before, we have a review on it. You can check that up here uh, that kind of goes over everything. Um, and it's really convenient because we have the we have the rain catchment system that feeds into a nipple uh, style waterer uh, that you can see in there. And I'll have a video on that coming up uh, pretty soon. And then we have the gravity feed auto feeder. Uh, so between the two of them and this kind of a coop, um, you know, we can have we can have all sorts of time away from the house if we need to or want to. Good morning, <laughs> and uh, it's not going to be too much of a bother uh, to us or to them. So, take a look around here. Excuse me, darling. Oh, <laughs> you got Easter eggs on Easter Sunday. <laughs> Dave's got jokes, and it's ironic enough because we actually have Easter eggers. Yes. All right. Now, if the chickens are the most entertaining aspect of our of our they garden. They are, they're uh, so funny. The bees are absolutely the most interesting. So we started the beekeeping process just by taking some classes and getting in touch with our local bee organization. Uh, we've had a lot of fun with that over the last uh, about eight months or so. Um, went and took a Penn State college course um, last, what was it, about six months ago, something like that. and. Started off with the one hive about two months ago, and they have done extremely well. And we just caught a swarm uh, in this one and moved some eggs from here to here, and that got us started with our second hive. So we're really excited to see where these go and you know where we get with them. That's, that's a lot of stuff to pack into one backyard, uh, but we do it, it works well. Um, it works pretty seamlessly too, uh, with plenty of space for the dogs to run around. We still have space to relax and enjoy spending time and with friends to grow. and grow. Like we have- We have more space to grow more stuff, which yeah. is even better. And we haven't even touched our front yard. Now you heard her, that also means that we have more space to grow so I can get more plants and I can get more stuff. Of course. And yeah, My definitely. My favorite thing. Definitely. So 
really, really excited. Um, we're gonna get started with uh, some fruit trees in the front yard in the coming, coming weeks and months. That's another project we wanna take on. We're hoping to get turkey and give them a try and some other crazy stuff. So that's the, uh, that's the end of our tour. I hope you enjoyed it and enjoyed getting to know us a little bit better. If you've liked what you've seen and you want to go on some more crazy adventures with me, the homestead goddess, Fonzie and Daisy, <laughs> then subscribe to the channel, like the video, add a comment, and we look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Bye.